Hey guys, thank you for tuning into the channel once again. Today I'm going to be showing you my HX Stomp preset for country music when it comes to bass guitar. If you're new around here and this video helps you out, don't forget to hit the like button because that really helps with the algorithm. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well to keep up to date with more videos like this and more content just like this. So I'm going to show you exactly how I used this preset, how I built it. I think it sounds great as you will have heard in the intro. I think it fits into the, the genre really, really well on those kind of tracks. I talk to you about how I built it and then talk about actually how to build it yourself on the HX Stomp. As you can see, I've got it all set up so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and follow me step by step on the Stomp in terms of actually building it. I generally like to build my presets uh, with the device in hand. In fact, this one was actually built uh, on a computer because I was trying to listen to tracks at the same time and kind of match some tones and get it to sit right. Uh, but generally, I like to build it like this, and I will show you exactly how you can do the same uh, on the unit here in front of me. First thing I will say is do forgive the fact that it's kind of a bit dusty, it's a bit battered, um, but that's because I do use it on gigs. I've taken it all over the world. This, this stomp's been to America, Sweden, uh, all over Europe, and obviously done gigs here in the UK as well. So it's a little bit bashed up, uh, all these pedals are gigging pedals, um, but hopefully that means that this preset comes from a good place as well. I used it on a gig not that long ago and it sounded really, really good. So let's dive into the process. First thing I would say is that I built it with a Sadowski jazz bass in mind, but it also works really well with precision basses. So I think generally Fender type instruments that have got plenty of mid range will suit this preset really, really well. So let's run through this preset from top to bottom. So first thing I've got is a split crossover. That was made by taking the deluxe comp, hitting the action button. Originally it would have been on path A, so I, I, I started it in the main chain. Then I've hit change path to path B uh, by using the knob here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do then is press the home button, come all the way across, grab this little junction here, press the action button, and bring it back here to after the amp and cab blocks. I'm also going to take this split crossover and move it back so that it sits before everything. And as you can see here, it's going for 150 hertz. So that means that everything under 150 hertz is being sent down into path B, and everything above 150 hertz is going straight through the rest of the chain uh, and through the amplification. So the first thing I have here is the compulsive drive. I've got that set super low gain 0 0.9, tone 1.2, um, peaks low. I'll leave it there so you can copy any of those things. Just pause it as you're going along if you want to copy this in the video. That drive there is just to add a little bit more drive for certain songs. Uh, I also think it works as a really nice bit of saturation because it's very low gain. You can hear the bass a little bit more clearly when it's engaged, um, but it does compress the signal yet again. Uh, but it sounds really, sounds really good and I like it. It adds something. So it's quite discreet. Turn that back off. So that's the first thing in the chain. Next thing we have the deluxe comp. I've got this set with a threshold of minus 12-ish. Uh, ratio of 4 to 1. Quite often in when I'm recording I'll set it to uh, 8 to 1, but in this instance 4 to 1 worked well for live work. Uh, attack 30 milliseconds uh, and the release as short as it would go. Um, just so that we don't get too much bite, we still get the attack and an ebb and flow of the bass sound. And that comp, because it's on the B path, is only working on our low end. Uh, and that's something I do in the box when mixing bass guitar. Next we have the Ampeg SVT with the normal model, not the bright model. Uh, I could have chosen the bright model, but for what... You know, the genre, I don't think it's too bright, you don't need super bright bass tones. I think it sounds warm and fat enough, and I, I really liked it. So I went with the normal version rather than the bright. Uh, drive, five and a half. Uh, it's really annoying. The touch buttons on the Helix are great, but they're really annoying when you're trying to demo things like this. Um, drive, bass five, mid five. Um, 200 hertz was the mid frequency I've chosen. Uh, treble at seven, so adding a little bit of brightness, but I don't think it gets as harsh as it does on the SVT bright model. Um, master is eight and a half, so it's getting some back end saturation. Don't forget when you turn the master up on a Helix amp, it adds the saturation, adds the back end tube amp saturation sounds. Uh, and the rest of it I think is pretty much stock to the original SVT. Uh, I might play with the bias, I'm not sure. Um, but the bias is really useful. If you want it to sound a bit, a little bit less distorted, uh, definitely play with the bias setting. That can really change how early it breaks up. And whether it's got kind of a bit more of a, 
an old school warm sound or maybe a little bit more bright tight modern sound definitely check out the bias setting uh, when you're on your amps next we have the SVT 810e cab um, we've got the dynamic 20 mic I think that adds a nice bit of mid-range over the stock uh, mic which I think is the 47 that it defaults to three inches I was like a bit more air in the sound um, albeit virtual air just move it back a bit I think it helps a lot um, I've not chosen to do any low cutting here because I'm low cutting later but you could choose to do that um, and then yeah pretty much all is stock and standard then next as I mentioned before we've got our rejoin point so the B chain rejoins the A chain here and then we have a parametric EQ I'm not doing anything with this except boosting the mid range at about 700 hertz as you can see here 700 uh, we've got a Q of 1 so it's fairly wide I think that helps with the boost it doesn't make it too artificial it just kind of fattens up that whole area but it's not going to stick out and just have one area that's got a load of gain added to it it's going to apply it across the whole mid range of the sound uh, and then the mid gain there is five decibels so it's quite a lot of gain being added but i think that really helps cut in a band mix when i built this preset i built it with headphones uh, and playing along to band tracks trying to get it to sit in the sound of a record and i think that's really helped with building this preset on its own, I don't love it, and I'll show you it in a second. I don't love the tone on its own, but the most important thing for me is that in a band mix, it sounded great. I could hear myself really, really clearly on stage, and I think it just sits in the exact right place that it needs to when it comes to your bass guitar sound. So that's that. Uh, nothing else going on with the parametric. Um, and I could have actually done the high and low cut here, which I will probably tweak next. I'll probably do it in a minute and tweak it, uh, because the next thing I have is a high and low cut. So low cut, I'm cutting at about 50, just so we've got no super lows that might get in the way of things. I mean, generally, i found that actually those super lows are really not necessary. You're going to get a bit more volume out of your cab. You're going to get a bit more of the mid-range back in your sound, and you're not going to be overstressing things. It's just going to be able to be heard a lot clearer. So I've taken out some 50, um, and then 6K is where I've cut the high end. I generally choose that frequency when I'm mixing in this genre uh, because I don't think I need that much top end there's enough cut there I think about 4k is where you'll find a lot of the cut uh, and 6k you know it's cutting it's just rounding it off uh, and getting out of the way of everything else I have no complaints and never want any more brightness for this genre above 6k and the last thing I've got is a multi-band compressor again this is something that I use all the time when I'm mixing I compress the low end separately to everything else and that means that that low end is going to stay consistent no matter what you're playing whether you're playing up high on the bass whether you play super down low uh, the low end is going to be consistent in volume it's going to keep punching and it also means that you can have that you know really leveled out and the top end of your sound being more dynamic as well and that just really works i've found so what we've got here we've got ratio four to one attack 30 50 milliseconds on the release We've then got the crossover again, so the crossover is just taking that low end signal uh, at 150 hertz. I'm, I'm compressing that, so everything below that is being compressed specifically, uh, and anything above is just allowed to kind of roam freely. Uh, and that's set with a minus 20 threshold, but definitely dial it into your taste. If you're thinking, oh, that's too much low end compression, it's not dynamic enough, then you can back it off. Uh, in order to do that, you want to raise it up so that the level the low end has to hit is higher. So being minus 20, if you imagine a meter, uh, when my low end level hits minus 20 up on the meter, it's gonna start compressing. But if you then move that up to say minus three, it's gonna require more of the signal in order to compress. Um, so keep that in mind when you're trying to dial in your compression, that's the, the way it works. Uh, I then added some low gain because I've compressed it by probably about three dB or so. I'm adding low gain back in so that it stays the same volume so that when I turn this compressor on and off it's exactly the same no matter what I do the only difference is that the signal sounds more compressed it's thicker uh, and it stays really nice and solid in comparison to the original dry signal and the rest of it is just kind of left as is this is what the preset sounds like on its own as I say not my favorite but in a mix it sounds great Definitely a little bit dirtier than most people's presets, but it really helps it sit well. And on a record, there's a ton of dirt that goes into generally making bass sound great. Uh, add the 
pedal in as well. So this is a bit of distortion from the, uh, the OCD mod of the compulsive drive. Again, dirty, but it tightens up the sound a bit. And in a mix, you can hear things just that little bit more clearly from having more saturation, a touch more distortion. And genuinely, I, when I had it in the headphones, when I've had it in a mix on stage, I couldn't tell it was distorted because it's not outrageous. It just fattens up the bass and makes it even more consistent. The Eagle Eyed Amongst, you will have noticed that the Cali 76 has been running all the way through this. Uh, and that's the first part of my chain. But if you wanted to recreate that, you can do it easily in the stomp. Here I've just chosen the deluxe comp, which you can get 1176 style sounds out of. Um, move the threshold right up um, to taste. I mean, let's have a look on the. Uh, if I just bypass this a second. Uh, on the Cali. Very, very lightly compressing the sound. Um, so, similar thing with this. You want the threshold to be quite high. Um, so you're just getting a little bit of gain reduction. Ratio set to 4 to 1, which is what I have it on, on the Cali, roughly. Um, and then attack 9 milliseconds, because the attack I have just away from the, the longest. This is the slowest here and the quickest here. So I have it back a little bit from that. Uh, so it's 9, 8 milliseconds, something along those lines. Dial it into taste. Um, release, I want it as early as it'll possibly go. So we're probably only back to 50 milliseconds. Um, and then level, just want to balance it out to make sure that when you turn the compressor on and the compressor off, it's pretty much the same. That's it, a, a lot of compression in the chain, but I think it really helps match up with those original records. It gives you, you know, if you're going to record it in a studio, you're going to have compression going in, compression in the box. There's a lot of compression that goes into these types of bass sounds, but every time you add a bit of compression, it thickens up that sound, makes it really fat, and also makes it very consistent, uh, which is what music like this really needs. It needs that little bit of support, it needs you to sit in the pocket and just fill out the sound. Um, so definitely make the most of the compression on this stomp, um, and use a bit of drive, a bit of saturation, which adds compression itself. So there we go, hopefully that has been helpful to you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what your go-to chains are for music like this. Obviously I think it's got a bit of a place outside of this specific genre uh, and I think using your bass tone like this on the stomp has got applications in all sorts of genre. Splitting off the low end is a really common trick when it comes to mixing and it means that you've got a really consistent clean low end, uh, clean DI sound low end uh, from the bass guitar and then you've got that little bit of colour and saturation on the top end with the amp just to allow you to hear yourself and cut through that mix a little bit more easily. If you enjoyed this video and it was useful, please do hit the like button, it really helps with getting this video out there. Do hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you're not subscribed already. And leave a comment, let me know your thoughts on this preset, let me know if you try it out, see how it goes for you. And I will see you in the next video.